Hi everyone, um, this is the InView software and this is what it looks like when you first opened it. I chose to open a 12 by 12 since that's the size of the mat and I like to work with grid lines. So one of the first things I'm going to do is go to where it says View at the top. I click on that and it says Display Mat. So I'm going to click on that and there I have my blue mat. So that's for starters. I'm going to put an image on here. It doesn't matter what image you put. I'm just going to put a square. And today I'm going to show you some of the toolbars. When I clicked on the square here, um, or the rectangle, um, I can just click, 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 and that's you'll see tons of them. I don't have to scroll or anything. It just automatically, anything at my fingertips, that's what happens. I'm going to go back to my arrow key, group all this in, and delete it. <clears throat> but what's interesting is it doesn't matter if you click on rectangle, look up here in the upper right at the top there. Um, you'll see right now it's clicked on rectangle. It brings up this toolbar and then it has eclipse. I can draw an eclipse. Um, this one here it, it, um, it's a polygon but you can make it any shape that you want. Um, depending on what size or the amount of um, points you put on it. So I put six and so I get six points. Um, then you have your arrow. Pretty straightforward. A star. Now this star has four points. If I want to change that then I would just change it to five and I would have five points. And then this is the center. And should be able to center it. I'm real, I'm not real sure about this function here. And then it says side. I don't know. It seems to do the same thing, so I'm probably missing something. I'm sure Chloe will show us in the future. And what I like is this one here. Um, in the past, you had to go and click on everything to get your circles. This one here, you don't have to hold your shift key down. You just draw it and you've got a circle. And with this one here, you don't have to hold your shift key down. You just draw it and you have a square and it pivots. So it's pretty cool. <clears throat> the other thing I like is, do you know how sometimes you want to put a slit into the center of something? That's what this does. This tiny little circle you just click on it and it puts this tiny little slit and I'm gonna use my magnification so that you can see that. It puts a little X. It's so cool. Click on it, X. No matter where you wanna do it, it puts these X's and I just love that feature. <clears throat> so those are your shapes and you'll get that if you click on the rectangle or the oval. You get the same toolbar. So I'm going to go back to the screen and I'm going to group all this in and hit my delete key, erase it. So that's the other thing that I wanted to show you. For those of you that are new, I'm just going to put a square or a rectangle in here for the time being. And I'm going to show you this toolbar here. Um, zoom to area is if you click on that and wherever you want that whatever um, the square is that you make that's blue square it's going to bring me to that point okay and if I click on this one that has nothing written in it it takes me back to the original screen so then it says zoom to object it brings the whole object into view and then this is the decrease and you keep clicking on it and it keeps going away from you. Of course this brings the whole screen in and then this one brings it all up as cl and close to. <clears throat> so that is your, these are, those are your magnification toolbars. Now if I had this colored and I'm just going to pick any color you go over here, this is your wire frame, which in the past you had to go search for if you weren't in the pro software, and it automatically just opens it up to wire frame. So I like that feature too. I'm going to color it back in again by unclicking it, and I'm going to throw another shape in here too. And let me color that one green. Okay, 
So now we have these two shapes, and this one here I need to make it a, the outline a darker color. And see how it shows, like where, I mean, even though the green's on top, you can still see the blue line over it. I kind of like that feature. So, up here, you have bring to front, move to back. So let me click on my blue one, and we'll bring it to front. Or, I can move it to the back. And if you have more than one feature, I mean more than two features, let me put another circle in here. Ugh, I didn't do that right. I just, there we go. Okay. It's gone to the back probably. Let's go to wireframe. Yep, there it is. So, let's make this a different color. I'll make it white. And I'm going to bring that to the front and get out of wireframe. And there it is. Okay. So now if we have these features and they're all stacked on top of one another like this. One of the things that you can do is click on it and this one here says, I'm sorry, let's try this one here, the blue one. And this one says bring it forward. What it does is it brings it forward on top of the layer that's in front of it. And if I click on it again, that's what happens. It comes to the front. So this one, let me make sure I got the right one. Let's bring forward, move to the back. Okay. You can just keep playing with these. Well, this time I'm going to click on the white and it says move back. It took it behind the green one and because that was the next layer and if I click it again it'll take it behind the blue one. If I click off of this and see there it is. If I bring it off of course, I made it white. I should have made that orange or something so you could really see it. Okay, so that's what those are for. So we have that done. And if you cl click on this, um, I forget what it's called, point, point move tool. I'm used to call it move point tool. They're calling it point move tool. Um, there are different things that you can do here too. We're going to skip these two here. We're going to come back to that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go to cut path. <clears throat> and just ignore that because that's um, it's making the performance of my computer slow down because I'm using this program. So cut path. So you click on that and what you can do is click a point on your object and see there's all these circles but I just clicked a square. I'm going to click a square here and when I go over here if it works right course it's not going to because I'm doing it this way. I'm just trying to get it off of there. Um, I should be able to encircle it. Yep, it worked. And what I've done, oh, let's try that again. I'm trying to get it to the move point, to move the tool. And what you see is it opened it up and it has two open points. It's not closed, but that's how you would do it. Like if you specifically needed to open a box, the stretcher, or whatever. And how I got that is the second um, tool down. It's called Point Move, and it brings up this toolbar. And that was the very first pair of scissors. Okay. Now I'm going to move this out of here. Oh, and you see these things here? These change the structure of the shape. It's, those are kind of fun to work with for the elliptical. So I just want to move this out of here so you can see it better. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and click on the point move tool and go to the second pair of scissors. This pair of scissors will slice through something. And as you can see, they are both closed ends. So this one, the first, the first tool, this first pair of scissors leaves it open. The second pair of scissors closes them. And then there's the third pair of scissors. And what it does is it, if you click on um, a point, ah ha ha, it's not going to work with me. Let me go into wireframe so I, oh, it's still not showing. Let me back out a little bit. Okay, that's because there are no points in here. Um, if I click on this point here, 
it'll put a square. And let's say I want to make a perfect tri um, triangle with this rectangle. I'm going to click on this point here, and I have two squares now. And if I go to my arrow key, I'm trying to get the move box, it should have separated them. And for some reason, it didn't, and I don't know why. Oh, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah, okay, so then what it does is it's, it disconnects the two points. It separates them. So that was the purpose of this last pair of scissors. But let's say we want to join them together. So what I need to do, I'm trying, i got to get back in this box here. I'm going to move it to where I want, and it's pretty cool because you can see the dotted lines, and now I can line those up with the original line that was there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the point move tool and make sure I have the right one. Join two points. I'm going to click on that and click on it joined it. I box it and it joined it. <clears throat> so that if I go to color this in now, if they're joined, it should color in. If they're not joined, it will not color in. Ha ha ha, so I must not have, oh that's right, I'm in wireframe, sorry. So now they are colored in, I forgot that was in the wireframe. So let's go back to the point move again, and this one here says connect two points. It'll draw a line between the two points, so I'm going to put like a, the, the blue square, the blue rectangle with these, and it'll join them, and it'll join them. May not be perfect, but it'll join with the line the two points. This one here, it'll join the points. This one here draws a line between the points for this one. So that's pretty cool. This one will add a control point. So if I click on that, I can come over here and see it's putting control points. And then I can use um, this last pair of scissors if I go and I click on those control points. I should have been able to separate them. Yep, there. You have to draw a square around it, I guess, in order to do that. I'm still learning this program, too. See, I separated them. They're open paths. <coughs> so that takes care of that one. I'm sorry. It's morning. It's very early, and I'm very congested. So forgive me. This one here, it says add control point to the middle. So there is a control point here and a control point here. If I click anywhere on this line, <clears throat> I guess I need to click on this first. That would help. Um, if I, I can click anywhere on this line, but it's going to go directly to the center. So that's pretty cool. We had that in the other one. One of the other features that I like about this too is, um, let me get back out again. And I want to group all these together and hit delete. Is if I bring in an image, <clears throat> and maybe it's a very congested image. It has a lot of nodes on it. And I didn't prepare this. Let me see if I can find something in my folder really quickly. I don't have my um, USB, my flash drive in that has all my stuff in it. But I'm hoping I'll be able to find something. Let me go to my desktop digital. Um, gotta, no, that's going to take too long. I just erased a bunch of things off my computer, but I'm just going to tell you real quickly because otherwise we'll be, this video will be too long. Like say you have a bunch of images <clears throat> and this will create it pretty clean so you're not going to get the full effect. Well, I can show you this. I just put a bunch of circles. And this is your your weld. It'll weld them together. If you go in the wireframe, you'll see they're all put together. Um, but what I wanted to show you, you can find it over here, or you can just directly click on it here. And what it'll do is it'll clean up the nodes. 
it'll just automatically clean them up so there's very few and you'll get cleaner cut lines. So that's a pretty cool feature. So I'm going to cut this video right now because it's going to get too long and I'll come back with another one. So have a great day.